Hi guys, I'm Matt from FOL Church and I'm so glad that you are joining us at FOL Kids Church this morning. We are going to have loads on loads of fun exploring the Bible, worshipping God and encountering the Holy Spirit whilst having a whole heap of fun along the way. Now I'll be here each Sunday morning at 10.30 to help you and your family explore your faith together. But don't worry, it won't just be me. You'll see plenty of guests, including some of our friends from Sunday morning back at church in Ashill. And wonderful worship led by the awesome Gateway Church team. And also, if you want to be a part of it, we want you to join in. All you have to do is send your pictures, your prayers, your thoughts and your stories and any videos that you want to show and share with us. Just get mum, dad or whoever is at home to send them to me at folkidschurch at gmail.com. And each week we'll show you what we've done in our special new segment. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get on with church today. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you love us. Thank you that you are with us, each and every one of us, wherever we are and whatever we're doing. Come and unite us together as we worship, learn and meet you together as a family. Amen. Let's worship together. This song is all about choosing to follow God and looking at the amazing things that happen when he moves. Feel the wonder, say his name, watch the darkness slip away, put your power on display, say goodbye to fear and shame. believe in it fully it's like me trusting in god it's like me leaning on this wall right here i rely on it not to break or crumble as i lean on it and it's there to hold me up that's what god's like i can trust in him well for me um 
I think about times when I feel worried or upset about something and I get all kind of, you know, distracted by things that I think are not going well or I'm not doing well. Um, and then if I pray and focus on God again and think about Jesus and what he would be doing or saying, then um, I think then he gives me his peace about the things that I'm worrying about and um, I choose to trust him, to think I'm going to believe that God is answer, answering my prayer, is going to answer my prayer and then I have to wait and things sometimes change or sometimes I change, my heart changes in uh, the answer to that prayer so I um, get more peace from God and feel his joy again. To trust in God means that you never have to face a situation or make a decision on your own. There's always someone there to talk to about it. Trusting God for me is a bit like trusting time. You know, time just always happens. It always goes on. You wake up the next morning and it's seven o'clock and then lunchtime it's 12 o'clock and you kind of forget about time. But when you come back to it and you look at the clock or look at your watch, it's the time's gone on. It's always been there, always happening. Just like God, he's always there for us. Even when we forget, even the days I forget to talk to him and pray, um, he's still there, always there. And then when I remember, he's there still. So always trusting that God is always there with us just makes us feel so, um, so good, just so happy. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to FOL Kids News. I'm Joe King and here are today's top stories. A missing banana causes girl great concern. Google's new driverless car is almost ready for walkies. And it's good news in little snoring as Norman finally can take his stabilizers off. We here at FOL Kids News want to hear from you, so if you have any jokes, pictures, prayers or stories, then we want to hear from you. Get mum, dad or whoever is at home to send anything you want to show us to folkidschurch at gmail.com. You can also leave your comments and thoughts in the messages below. Just tell whoever is at home what you'd like to say and get them to write it to us. We want to hear from you. So get to work and look out for your input in the next edition of FOL Kids News. Unfortunately, detectives are still unable to pinpoint the criminal after a recent crime spree. With more on this story, it's over to our crime correspondent who is... Thanks, Joe. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Over the past few weeks, a criminal mastermind has been at work. Banks have been looted, vaults have been emptied, and trillions of pounds has gone missing. Um, needless to say, whoever is responsible for these crimes is both a genius and rather handsome. <sighs> Police have no leads and therefore have no idea where I am. Or the mysterious robber are. What's that? Sorry? Uh, breaking news just in. The police have found some DNA evidence and are therefore about to arrest the culprit. Um, uh, I think I'd better go to get a closer look. Uh, so it's back to the studio. I've been Robin Banks. And finally, the mysterious case of the missing chicken is yet to be resolved. If you should see such a chicken, make sure that you proceed with caution, whilst also waving your arms furiously and shouting at the top of your lungs to alert your household to the sighting. Anyway, don't forget to get in touch. This has been FOL Kids News, and I have been Joe King. Goodbye. Stories of the Bible Noah and the Flood this is Noah. Hi! 
Noah was a good man who tried to do the right thing. Yeah. But in the time when Noah lived, he was the only man on earth who was doing the right thing. All the other people on earth were doing evil things and hurting each other. This made God very sad. So God said that he was going to send a flood to the earth that would destroy every living thing on earth because he was sorry he ever made them. But God decided to save Noah and his family. God told Noah to build a boat and fill it with two of every kind of animal and bird. Colored, bird, moth, okay, all here. Noah did just that, and then Noah and his whole family boarded the boat and waited for the flood to come. The rain fell hard for 40 days and 40 nights. Water! Water covered the whole earth, and the boat floated safely on the surface. Water covered even the highest mountains on earth, but Noah and his family were saved. God remembered Noah and all the animals on the boat. God sent a wind to blow across the earth, and the flood began to go away. After five months, the boat came to rest on a mountaintop. A few months later, the other mountains could be seen. Forty days later, Noah opened a window and released a raven. The bird flew back and forth until the flood had dried up. He also sent a dove out to see if it could find dry ground. But the dove couldn't find a place to land because there was still water on the ground. So the dove returned to the boat. Oh, hello again. After another seven days, Noah sent the dove out again. This time, it came back with an olive leaf. Oh, good girl. So Noah knew that the flood waters were almost gone. A week later, he sent the dove out again, and it didn't come back. So many months after the flood began, Noah opened the covering of the boat and saw that the ground was drying. He waited two more months, and at last, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Leave the boat, all of you. Release the animals so they can be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth. Okay! So Noah, his family, and all the animals finally left the boat. See ya! Noah built an altar to the Lord to make a sacrifice to God. God was pleased with Noah's offering and said to himself that he would never again destroy every living thing on earth. God blessed Noah and his sons and promised them that he would never send another flood. He gave them the rainbow in the sky as a sign of this promise to Noah, his family, and all of mankind. Now, I'm going to tell a story that you may not know about me. It's a story from when I was little. Okay, not that little. I was about 17. Still scary, though. Now, I had made some friends who had brought me to church. Wait a minute. Here. You might remember this place. It's still here. My friends had taken me in, taken me to church, and introduced me to God. Now, whilst I was brought up in a church, I probably wasn't a Christian at this time, although things were about to change. One Friday night, the youth group were going to a church service in London. They asked me if I'd like to go with them and I said okay. So I jumped in the minibus with them and we travelled all the way down to London. It was a long journey and actually we were running a little bit late. So we had to sneak in quietly and there were rows and rows of pews next to the wall. I was the first one into the pew which meant I was next to the wall. And I was stuck there, so I had to listen to the whole thing. Now, <laughs> I'm getting a little bit old and my memory isn't quite what it used to be, so I can't tell you exactly what happened. All I can tell you was that there was exciting music and lights and, and drama and all other amazing different things that had caught my attention. 
But then there was a man who got up and spoke and he said something that struck my heart in a way that had never been struck before. The Lord said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. Jeremiah 31, 3. God is not mad at you. He loves you. He knows you and he wants to be your friend. That night, I realised I'd spent my life hiding from God. I thought he'd be mad at me because I didn't always make the right choices, but there, in that room, I knew that God was real, and now I knew that I could trust him. So that day, I decided to start an adventure with God, to trust him and to follow him, because now I knew that he was real and I knew that he loved me. Now, I genuinely had no idea what this decision really meant. I just knew I had to make it because I had to follow a God who knew me and loved me. And I've been fortunate over the last 10 years or so to be able to do some amazing things as I have adventured with God. I left home and went to university where I was able to help tell the whole campus about Jesus. I've led worship in a cathedral, helping hundreds of people to worship God. I've led assemblies in Uganda, so hundreds of children could hear that God loved them. I've told kids about the creator of the universe, who placed each star in the sky and yet still knows them and loves them. I stood on a stage in front of 600 kids at New Wine and invited them to know Jesus. I had the honour of leading a youth group at this church and see a wave of amazing young people grow up into wonderful godly people, many now getting married and starting their families. And my day job enables me to tell children about Jesus in exciting and fun ways. I got married to a beautiful godly lady. I have three amazing boys and I get to lead my family each day by putting God at the centre of our lives. Did I know that any of this would happen when I decided to trust God and start my adventure with him? No. But have I enjoyed the journey? Absolutely. When Noah first heard God's voice, he had no idea where his adventure with God was going to take him. What he decided to do was trust God and start an adventure with him. He took the first step by nailing the first planks of the ark together. He didn't know what would come next, but God did. He guided Noah every step of the way, kept him safe and brought him and his family to safety as they stepped off the ark. When I first became a Christian there was a song that I remember singing, first at church and then at home as I learned to play the guitar. It said these words, find me in the river, find me on my knees, I've walked against the water, now I'm waiting if you please. I remember singing this as a song that kind of summed up where I felt I had been and where I wanted to be. It said that I was walking against the water, which kind of felt like my life before I chose to follow and trust God. But that I was waiting there, stepping into the river with my head and my heart, that meant I was choosing to trust God and to follow him wherever that would take me. Sometimes it's good to find a way to make a heart choice visible by finding a way to act it out. It's a sign to the world and to myself that my heart has made up its mind. My boys and I are making a river in our lounge. If you want to, you and your household can make a river too. All you need is some bed sheets or blankets. I'm going to play Find Me In The River on my guitar. Whilst I sing, if you're choosing to trust God and start your adventure with him today, then how about you step into your river, just like we are? The words will come up on the screen so you can join in the song too. Or feel free just to lie down and have a quiet moment and think about the adventure ahead of you with God at your side. Find me in the river Find me on my knees Forked against the water And I'm waiting if you please I've longed to see the roses 
but never felt the thorns and brought our pretty crowns but never paid the price Find me in the river, find me there Find me on my knees with my soul laid bare Even though you're gone and I'm cracked and dry Find me in the river, I'm waiting here Find me in the river Find me on my knees Fought against the water and I'm waiting if you please We didn't count on suffering We didn't count on pain Blessings in the valley In the river I away Find me in the river, find me there Find me on my knees with my soul laid bare Even though you're gone and I'm cracked and dry Find me in the river I'm waiting here I'm waiting here I'm waiting here for you Father God, thank you that you invite us onto an amazing adventure. I pray that my friends will come to know you, come to trust you, come to follow you and see where that adventure takes them. Holy Spirit, come and fill us now so that we can know you more. In Jesus' name, Amen. Guys, I hope you have had a wonderful morning with us and I hope that you have learned loads. We'll see you next week, 10.30, same time, same place. Take care and God bless.